Elizabeth, a literary princess. If you are new here, welcome. I am a six-year PhD candidate in English literature with a focus on Victorian women novelists. And as you might expect, I love to read. Today I have the mid-year book freakout tag for you. I do this tag every year and both here and on Tumblr actually, and I always really enjoy it. Um, I feel like I can't believe we're mid-year already. I feel like I just did the quarter year crisis tag. And also I feel like 2024 never really started. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, I'm still like back in 2019, to be honest, time is weird. Anyway, so there are 13 questions. Let's jump in. Question one, the best book that you have read so far in 2024. This has, now I'm not technically done with it. However, it's definitely going to be the best once I am finally done with it. This is Red Comet, The Short Life and Blazing Art of Sylvia Plath by Heather Clark. This is a biography of Sylvia Plath. It's very chunky. It is so amazing. So, so good. Definitely going to be like, I don't know if something's going to knock this out. That it's going to be hard really loving this so much. I can't wait to finish it. It's just, it's very heavy. So, you know, reading it is kind of a difficulty, but yes, so, so good. Question number two is the best sequel you have read so far in 2024. And this has to go to Emily Wilde's Map of the Other Lands by Heather Fawcett. Lots of Heathers today. I was so excited. This was my most anticipated release of the year. I had an arc. I read it. I, I think I started reading it on January 1st and it was so good. It was the perfect sequel to Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. It was everything I wanted. It was just as good and I cannot wait for book three next year. So excited. Question number three, a new release that you have not read yet. Um, and this I think I also said for the quarter year crisis tag. Um, the Prisoner's Throne by Holly Black. This is the second book in the Stolen Air duology, which itself is a sequel series to the Folk of the Air trilogy. <laughs> um, I just haven't gotten it yet. I intend to get a copy whether I buy it or I get it for my birthday, but I just haven't yet. I mean, I haven't bought it yet and it's not been my birthday yet, so. Question four, most anticipated release of the second half of the year. And this is The Trouble with Mrs. Montgomery Hearst by Katie Lumsden. So that is Katie from Books and Things. I read her debut novel last year, The Secrets of Hartwood Hall, and loved it. And I cannot wait for The Trouble with Mrs. Montgomery Hearst. She read the first chapter recently on her channel. So, so good so so good it comes out in July so it's like it's almost here I'm like it'll come out and then I have to wait for it to be shipped because it's shipping from the UK but I cannot wait so excited it's gonna be fantastic I already know it question number five biggest disappointment oh boy the biographer's tale by A.S. Byatt okay possession is one of my favorite books ever it's not only is it one of my favorite books ever, I think it is one of the best books that I have ever read. So, you know, I was expecting great things from this. Very great things. And it did not deliver at all. It was such an interesting concept, but there was, there was no resolution there was no, the, the main character, I hated him. He was, I think I gave this two stars. I'm like, maybe this should have been a one and a half. Although by its writing is amazing. So like, at least there was that. I think that's why I did the two stars. But no, this was such a disappointment when I was expecting like another possession. I was like, it probably won't be as good as possession. Sure. But Mm -mm. very disappointing question number six is biggest surprise and in an interesting turn of events my biggest surprise was actually a reread 
This is Sleepwalking by Meg Wolitzer, who is an author I really enjoy. Um, this, I think, was my second book by her. And I read it a few years ago, and like, I was like, it's fine. I think I gave it four stars, but it was really more of a three or a three and a half. And it's because it was kind of mismarketed to me. It gets marketed as a campus novel when it's really not. It's more an exploration of grief, and it's only the first maybe third of the book that takes place on campus. So I decided I wanted to reread this, and it ended up being a five star from me. I thought it was absolutely amazing. And I was like, wow, <laughs> how did how did we go from me not really liking it that much to me thinking, wow, this is one of the best books I've read this year. And I really do think it's because I knew what I was expect. I knew what to expect this time. And I went into it wanting a book about grief and not wanting a campus novel. So uh, the way that books get marketed to you, it really can change your perception. So I was very surprised to have this be a five star read, but I really loved it. I think Meg Walzer is a great writer and I bought a new book by her recently. <laughs> Question number seven, favorite new author, new to you or debut no author, whichever. So I'm just going with a new to me author and I'm like favorite author. I don't consider an author a favorite author unless I've absolutely loved three of their books. However, this is an author who I think I'm going to love all of her books and I plan to read all of her books now. This is Devani Lucer. I read Sister Novelists, The Trailblazing Porter Sisters, Who Paved the Way for Austin and the Brontes. It was amazing. It is a biography of Jane and Anna Maria Porter, who are two sisters who were novelists in the Regency period. This was amazing. It was my top book of the year before Red Comet came along. And Devani Lucer has several other books, mostly on Jane Austen. And I think I'm really gonna love those. And I intend to read all of them when I get the chance because this was so good. I had the absolute pleasure of meeting two of Lucer's graduate students at the British Women Writers Conference this May. And when we, we were talking and they were like, oh yeah, our, our supervisor. And they were talking, I'm like, what, what, what? And they said her name. I was like, wait, what was her name again? And they were like, oh, Devani Lucer. I'm like, fangirling, fangirling over her book. <laughs> so yeah, that was, that was, that was really fun. But yes, I cannot wait to read more by her. Amazing. Question number eight is newest fictional crush. I don't have those generally speaking for books. TV shows is more where I would get a crush, although even not really now. I'm like, mm. Yeah, so I, I don't have one, sorry. Question number nine is newest fictional character. And this is the question I had the most trouble with because I kept thinking of characters, but they were all from rereads who I already knew I really loved those characters. Gwendolyn Harleth, my girl. Mary Garth, also my girl. And I was like, who is a new character that I've enco encountered that I liked <laughs> or that was I could consider a favorite? And so I ultimately decided not on a character I liked, but on a character that I loved to hate. And this is June Hayward from RF Kwan's Yellow Face. Um, June Hayward is a author struggling and she has another a friend who is also an author who is very successful. When her friend dies in front of her, she steals her latest manuscript, and which is about Chinese experience during um, World War I, I believe. One of the World Wars. One, two, I'm not, I'm not quite sure. I don't remember, but, and June ends up marketing herself as Juniper Song, making people think that she is Asian American when she is not. And June is despicable. 
most of the time. I hated her so much and I had so much fun hating her. Sometimes I would feel like she om like almost a little bit bad for her and then she would do something else. I was like, girl, girl, why are you terrible? So yes, she is a very fun character to hate. Question number 10 is a book that made you cry. I don't think anything has actually made me cry yet this year, but Lonely Castle in the Mirror by Mizuki Sujimura came pretty close. Um, this is kind of <sighs> magical realism with children going through their mirrors into this portal world of a castle. And it really is dealing with mental health, um, grief, bullying, depression, anxiety. It's so good and it made me very emotional. <laughs> Question number 11 is a book that made you happy and this has to go to The Sunshine Court by Nora Sakovic. This is the fourth and very unexpected um, new book in the All for the Game series. Look, okay, I know they're not good technically, like like, I know, it's it's a ridiculous concept. It's about this made-up sport named Exe, and a bunch of the characters that play this sport are involved in the mafia. It's crazy. It's insane. It makes no sense half the time. It's fantastic. <laughs> I love it. This book made me so happy. I just, it was so good. We were following the character of Jean Monroe, who is more of a minor character in the main three books of the series. And he is going to a new college XC team in California. And it is very different from what he is used to. And there is Jeremy Knox, the captain of his new team, the Trojans. And yeah, it's great. Like, look at this smile on my face. I loved it. It's so great. It made me so happy. Question number 12 is the most beautiful book you've bought or received this year. And um, technically, technically it's like six. Oh my God, it's my Norton anthologies. I love them so much. These are the Norton um, anthologies of English literature, the brand new 11th edition. I got desk copies of both sets. Um, and the sec, this, Technically, it's the first set, but this this one um, I haven't even showed in a haul yet. I just got it. They are so gorgeous. Ah! I love them. I'm going to put them down, though. They're very heavy. <laughs> yeah, gorgeous. I'm so excited for them. Question number 13. What books do you need to read by the end of the year? I could give you a list a mile long, but I won't. I will limit myself to two that I really need to read because I'm writing dissertation chapters on both of them. The first is The Doctor's Wife by Mary Elizabeth Braddon, which is on my July TBR. And then the second is Ariadne by Ouida. I would like to get to a few more Ouida books as well because I think Ariadne is not the only one I want to talk about, but I'm just going to stop myself there because otherwise, otherwise it's going to go on forever. So that is my 2024 mid-year book freakout tag. Let me know down in the comments below. What are your answers to some of these questions? Have you read any of the books I talked about? What did you think? If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more of my bookish content. It has been great chatting with you. I will see you soon. Bye.